dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News Weekend Edition. Good evening, I'm Keaton Hall. Happy Father's Day to all the dads and father figures out there. A very important day for many around the Commonwealth. On June 19th, 1865, the remaining slaves in the United States were freed, creating the day that we now know as Juneteenth. However, it wasn't until last year that this day was recognized as a federal holiday by President Biden. To honor this day, one Eastern Kentucky organization has decided to host their first Juneteenth celebration in Harlan County. WYMT's Alyssa Williams was there. June 19th is a significant day for those of the Eastern Kentucky Social Club or EKSC in Lynch. So a lot of people didn't know this was the day of freedom. To honor this day, those with EKSC hosted their first Juneteenth celebration outside of the EKSC Lynch chapter building on Sunday. So it was just very important for us to honor the holiday and do something here in Eastern Kentucky for the whole Tri-City area because we've invited everybody to come and join in with us. Founded in 1969, the Eastern Kentucky Social Club served as an organization for black Americans with ties to the coal mines of Harlan County to reunite families and friends. We are still doing things. We are here. Uh, we may, may can't do it as big as they do it in the cities, but we can make a difference and we wanted to make a difference. We wanted to be the first to do it. With chapters spanning across the nation, the Lynch EKSC chapter wanted to not only host this event to honor the meaning of Juneteenth, but to continue the organization's growth right here in the mountains. It's gratifying and fun, you know, to see the younger people at least take a start in trying to keep it going on. So I'm happy for that. Through education, great food, and a love of their community, the members of the EKSC Lynch chapter hope to continue their mission and continue this tradition of honoring Juneteenth for many years to come. You can always think that if you're in Eastern Kentucky, that you're in Eastern Kentucky, that you're left out of things. And I think it was very important for me to play the role to help the Eastern Kentucky Social Club bring this forth, that we're here, we want to be well represented and well known coming together to celebrate the Day of Freedom, one event at a time. In Harlan County, Alyssa Williams, WYMT Mountain News. Andrea Massey, one of the event's coordinators, says she hopes to gain even more community involvement for next year's event. Well, some celebrated this Juneteenth in Lexington with a literary event at the Lyric Theater. The Afro-Latchin Poets put on a performance to both respect the holiday and to highlight the work of some talented members of their group, both old and new. The event featured Kentucky Poet Laureates of the past and present. This night was special for the poets in more ways than one, as they also welcomed six new members into the fold. It has just felt like a great boon to me um, living in West Virginia and knowing that I am part of this wider community of poets of color in this region, knowing that we are not working in isolation, that we are really part of this wider community. Alvarez and Poet Laureate Crystal Wilkinson hope people took the time tonight to remember their ancestors and recognize the culture that has been woven into the region. Folks in Pineville can expect some traffic changes downtown this week. Starting Monday, construction will close Pine Street at the Kentucky Avenue intersection, closing the entire intersection for the first part of the week. Work will shift to the Virginia Avenue intersection in the middle of the week. Officials with Main Street Pineville say all downtown inbound traffic will be able to use the US 25 East entrance at Pickpack with no detours. The Pike County Library summer reading programs have recently kicked off and kids are coming out for some summer fun. Along with an opportunity to have fun and socialize with other children, Kids 12 and under who attend the library's programs can learn, also learn outside of the classroom. Along with various programs, the Pike County Library has also partnered with Dolly Parton's Imagination Library to offer free books to kids 5 and under. We've had a great response. We've had all kinds of kids enrolled. Um, it's free for any child in Pike County under the age of 5 with a Pike County address. All they do is sign up online at imaginationlibrary.com and they can begin receiving free books in the mail each month. Salisbury said nearly 1,500 kids are currently enrolled in the Imagination Library in Pike County, which is a much higher amount than they thought would sign up.
Well, a cool night is on tap across the mountains, but that's not going to last long as another round of summer heat is right around the corner. Here is a look at I-64 over in Moorhead. All is quiet in Rowan County tonight and high temperatures below average once again in the upper 70s and lower 80s. 76 in Jackson, 77 in Prestonsburg and 81 for Somerset and London. Temperatures across the board tonight in the upper 50s and lower 60s, 59 for Hazard, 57 in Manchester, and 65 over in Pikeville. All is quiet on pinpoint Doppler tonight, and this quiet weather continues into the overnight hours. Maybe a little bit chilly as we walk out the door on Monday. Temperatures falling into the middle and lower 50s, but another warm up is on the way. I have those full details coming up in just a little bit. Keaton. Thanks, Cameron. It's not officially summer yet, but already the U.S. is getting hit with some extreme weather. That includes heat waves, as Cameron was saying, and severe flooding. By Wednesday, 25 million Americans will be under heat advisories. That'll last until early July. In the south, temperatures will soar into the triple digits, with some areas 25 degrees above normal. The heat has been so extreme in southwest Kansas, it's killed cattle. Cattle are extremely resilient animals, and they're very, very tough, hardy animals. Sometimes conditions get so extreme, it doesn't matter how hard producers prepare uh, the environment, the operation, the animals for weather extremes. About 2,000 heat-related cattle deaths have been reported in the past week, and an estimated 40% of Americans live in counties that were hit by climate disasters last year. Some people trying to travel this holiday weekend are running into trouble. Since Friday, thousands of flights have been canceled or delayed. Delta says they're canceling about 100 flights daily this summer to try and minimize schedule disruptions. U.S. drivers getting a slight break on gas prices this weekend. However, the national average for ga gas of around $5 a gallon still, according to AAA. But travel officials expect demand to increase over summer, likely raising the price further. Storms ripped through parts of southern West Virginia and Kentucky Friday, left thousands without power, roofs torn off, and trees down. In the Mann community, which much of the power is back on, but the Main Street, you can still see damaged cars and torn up roofs. The siding to Georgina Harley's home had come off. She says a lawn shed was laying on a truck across the street. The roof torn off an old storefront, and beside her, the roof of her neighbor's home had blown off into her yard. The top of my roof blew down. I had water come under my door. The, I've got big spots on my roof where it's drinking through. About 900 customers are still without power in Logan County. A spokesperson with the AP, AEP says that's about 5% of the customers in the county. Here in Kentucky, well, a, little, a couple hours ago, it was still over 4,000 people without power and 800 were still out in Martin County alone. Police in one central Kentucky town are now working with a guardian angel. That's the name of a new light the Georgetown police was recently awarded. The guardian angel light clips onto the officer's vest or bicycles. Police say it can be dangerous on dark rural back roads and the lights, which come with multiple settings, really come in handy. This is the forward button, has a few options, um, just the, the white light and then it has um, just the, the flashing lights. It actually has a rear um, directional. Until recently, the department solely relied on cruiser lights and reflective vests. The department was given six lights through the Spirit of Blue nonprofit. Each light costs $100, but the officers say it's worth every penny to these police officers. The stable at the Kentucky Derby Museum in Louisville has been closed for the past two years, but Friday was their grand reopening and they had another surprise to go with it. Guests were able to get a look at the museum's new miniature horse and resident thoroughbred. They held a naming contest for the mini horse and mighty Aris Ar Aristides won out of more than 1,200 submissions. While the miniature horse is a permanent addition at the stable, the resident thoroughbred will, ro will rotate out every few months. Our mission is to engage, educate, and excite everyone about the extraordinary experience that is the Kentucky Derby. We take great pride in that. This stable and these beautiful animals 
help us do that and deliver our mission each day to our guests. The stable is the only living exhibit at the Kentucky Derby Museum. Coming up.